I don't know about any of you all, but I've never lived through a pandemic before. Um, so it's the first time and it's very scary. It's a very frustrating time. I think in general, the world was kind of uh, already had a lot of fear going on, but now it's to another level. Like, I don't know about you, but when you're walking down the street and you hear somebody call for a sneeze, I haven't even been hearing people say, bless you anymore. <laughs> like people just stare at you like you're crazy or like they want to punch you in the face. So with that being said, I just think that it's really important that we take time out to just have spaces where we can unwind and relax a little bit and just take our minds off the situation at hand. Um, so before we start, I just want to ask everybody to take a few seconds to think of three things that they're grateful for. Um, you don't have to say it out loud. You can put it in the chat if you want to, or just think about it in your head. But I really want to get us into the mindset of gratitude, because I think that is the biggest thing that's going to help us get through this situation together. And so I'll start. Um, I'm really grateful to see all of your faces today and some names that I know, friends from old times. I have family members in here, my Aunt Louise. It's so good to see you, Aunt Louise. <laughs> um, my grandmother's older sister. And uh, this is really just a blessing that you guys wanted to come out and listen. I'm also grateful to God that I was able to wake up today um, and that all my family and friends are okay. And I'm also glad that it is hot outside because it was cold the last few days and I love me some good spring summer weather. So just to get started, um, I want to kind of just talk about what's going on and, and how we're feeling. Um, if you watch the news, which I don't, I actually had to cut out the media because it's a lot of fear mongling and that just interrupts the vibrations of everyone so when there's a lot of fear around people can't really it's hard for people to think of ways that they're actually okay like people don't really understand that fear is just an emotion it's not a real thing if that makes sense so I just think that's important to keep in mind. Um, with the quarantine, a lot of us aren't able to escape in ways that we used to, um, not being able to go to bars, sports are kind of canceled. So people aren't really able to, you know, you have to sit in the house with yourself and <laughs> with your thoughts and your past experiences. So a lot of people are going through it right now. Um, and I find that people are talking about how important it is to keep up your physical health this time, like during these times. Like, I don't know if, if you guys are on Instagram or Facebook and see like the at-home workouts where they'll say like, oh, just try these two simple moves. And then they like go in their living room and start lifting up their couch. Nobody can actually do that. You know what I'm saying? So, but I also think that mental health is just as important as physical health. So I want to start by giving a couple of, um, facts about laughter and how it literally can save you and make you feel better. Um, laughter, laughing boosts your immune system. It decreases your stress hormones. Um, it increases your immune cells. It improves the function of your blood vessels and increases blood flow to your heart. Um, it burns calories, which is good because I don't know about y'all, but I've been eating like crazy in the house. So I probably gained them all back, but you do burn some laughing. Um, and it just eases your anxiety and tension. And it's the best diffuser, diffuser for anger and confrontation. So when you're in a situation and you feel fear, laughter is the best way to kind of put fear in its place. Because when you laugh at something, when you laugh at a situation, it no longer has the power over you to make you feel bad about it. Um, and it helps to shift your perspective on issues. Like if you think about something and the first thing you feel is angry, if you laugh, and even if you don't find anything funny about it yet, but if you just do the actual act of laughing, you can convince your mind that it's not as bad as it may seem, which is important. Um, and that's just kind of something that I live by 
uh, because if it didn't kill me, it'll make me stronger. So if I didn't die, I can laugh. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I want to kind of talk about how I found laughter and comedy to be a uh, way to express myself. Um, I have my mom here with me and she's going to talk in a few, uh, but growing up as the daughter of a comedian, we actually, like some of my first memories were seeing her perform in front of people. And it was so powerful to see how one person on stage could actually just shift the energy of whatever people were going through at the time. Like you don't know what people have when they walk into that show. And to know that you can help them feel better before they leave is really powerful. And um, as a child, my grandmother put me and my cousins in Girl Scouts. We did debutante balls. Um, we were heavily in church, so we were doing altar prayers all the time. Uh, where like we literally at like seven and eight years old had to get up on the altar and pray in front of hundreds of people um and then afterwards they would all kind of you know tell us that we did a good job and that really boosts our confidence and that's kind of why uh, comedy was easy for me because i had already been a performer um kind of by force uh once my mom found out that we were into that kind of stuff we they actually were like pimping us out like we were traveling to churches we used to do uh dream girls the song move from dream girls once she found out that we could sing it and have fun with it we were traveling all over the place performing at shows new year's eve parties all types of things where uh we were just getting out there and just you know sharing our joy with people so but it wasn't until I moved to Seattle back in January of 2016. Um, I moved there because I was dating a guy at the time and I just wanted to escape Baltimore. Um, so I moved there and was living with him, you know, 3,000 miles away from my family. And we ended up breaking up. And when we broke up, I realized that I already had shifted my life so much that I might as well do things that I had always wanted to do and my goal was just to go to one open mic um just get it out the way and i did that and literally since then people have been reaching out to me offering me money to do it saying i should do this and that and it kind of just kept flowing um but it it wasn't until that situation which was us breaking up which could be deemed as like something negative it wasn't until that happened that I was able to see the positive in it. And that's kind of what I'm gonna talk about today, how in all situations, there's good and bad. And so it really just depends on how you shift your perspective and look at it. Um, as a kid, being a child of an artist, since my mom was on TV and stuff, people never really believed that we were broke sometimes. So we literally couldn't get food stamps because my mom would go in the office and they would be like, we just saw you on the wire, you had money. Like they weren't trying to give us things because of how they thought that we'd appear. Um, but my mom always made sure to make fun out of it and make games out of it. Like sometimes we would go in the house and the power was off. And so the game now was, is it a block outage or overdue bill and we never knew and it was fun and it was cool and we slept with candles that night and we felt safe and loved um so you know it's just really about taking situations that could be seen as negative and shine a new light on them because everything is temporary just like this coronavirus situation we will not be in this forever Although it may take a while and although it isn't fun and it's not the best and we much rather be able to gather with each other and go to concerts and parks and all that stuff, we, we kind of just, sometimes you have to sit in that mess and wait till it ends. Because if you never experienced the bad, you wouldn't even know what good felt like. Um, so I just think that that's important. I think that's important to know. Um, there were times where as kids, we, you know, had to eat jokes for dinner sometimes. 
And you know, jokes are actually very nutritious um, and they will fill you up. So, you know what I'm saying? Like we just had to take, <laughs> make the best of it. Uh, growing up with a bunch of comedians, I didn't even know that other people didn't laugh as much as we did. Like I thought it was BT Comic View at everybody's house. Like I thought that was normal until I started out hanging out with other people and realizing that that wasn't the case. Um, so yeah, so that's just kind of how I live my life. Yes, jokes for dinner. It's okay. You know, it's all right. Sometimes you had sleep for dinner. Sometimes you had jokes for dinner. And guess what? I'm I'm still healthy and I'm still here today. So that's all that really matters. Um, but before I bring my mom on, I do want to talk about um, one situation in particular that really shows the power of having a positive attitude in the midst of your troubles and um, just, just keeping a, a good mindset. Um, when I was living in Seattle, after me and my ex broke up, I didn't have a place to live. So I was sleeping on his couch for um, like nine months. I was actually sleeping on his couch and I finally found this apartment that I loved. And I was so excited to move in. And I went to the place, signed the lease. I put my deposit in and everything. Um, and I went before I moved in to go through and kind of clean up, you know, as you would do with a new place and just kind of check things out before I move all my stuff in there. I went to the apartment and as I was smudging, like using sage to kind of just get the negative energy out, um, roaches appeared. Roaches that I've never seen in this apartment literally started like crawling out of the oven. They were swarming in the kitchen. And again, mind you, I had just put my deposit down. I already signed the lease. Who wants to live with roaches? Like that, that was poor me. Like I'm not doing that anymore. I don't want that experience. So I was so stressed out. I literally could not eat or sleep. Um, and so I talked to my landlord and so she's like, she's going to send the, you know, the people that kill exterminators. She's going to send the exterminator over to the apartment to clear it out. Things should be fine. She sent them over. He said, give it a week. We gave it a week. I came back. The roaches were still there. And at this point, I'm so frustrated. I'm like literally losing my mind, but I never let it show to her. I was always very uh, patient and nice with her. And she was doing the same with me. Um, and so as we're trying to figure out these solutions, she mentioned that she had another apartment that I may be able to look at um, instead of living in this one. And so the day that I went to look at the other apartment, I'm sitting in front of the apartment talking to her and she's showing it to me and she's like, this one is a two bedroom, has an office, brand new appliances. It was way much better than the first apartment that I wanted so bad. Um, it like 10 times more than I could even think. Um, and so I asked her how much was it going to be? And she told me that she would give it to me for the same price as my original one bedroom apartment, the one with the roaches. And so that just showed me that even though that was one of the most frustrating times of my life where Technically, I'm kind of homeless, you know, I'm living, sleeping on couches. I really wanted to move so bad, and I was so upset that this was happening to me, but I continue to stay positive. I continue to pray about it, and I continue to be just good to other people. Because sometimes when bad things happen to us, it's real easy to be miserable and be negative and push that on other people, but because I was patient, and because I was so kind to her, she let me have that apartment that was probably 10, twice as much, you know, as expensive. She let me have it for the same price as the original. So that's just one, uh, that's just an example of how like, you know, being patient can re really get you through certain situations that I wanted to share with people. I don't even like telling that story because at the time it was so embarrassing. Like, I was like, I cannot have this house with roaches. I don't want people to come over. I deleted my Instagram. I just was so stressed out. I didn't know what to do. So, yeah. So that's just, that's just, uh, 
something that I wanted to share because it kind of reminds me of this situation and how sometimes when you're in the midst of um, trouble, it may seem like there's no way out and it may seem like, you know, what you want may not ever come. But again, if you be patient and you have that positive mindset, it will happen to you and it probably be way better than you expected it to be. So I'm going to bring on my mom um, because she is the one who taught me to live my life this way. And she's going to explain a little bit about who she is, what she does, and how she uh, found her medium to produce art and to produce light and love and how she decided to share that with the rest of the world. So mom, are you ready? Yeah, girl! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Did you say Aunt Louise? Aunt Louise, what's up, shorty? It's been a minute, and you know how to do the dag on Zoom. I'm I impressed, you. Mama. Hi, you. It's muted, Aunt Louise. You can't hear me anyway. <laughs> I'm impressed. She's zooming in here. Nice. You ain't never come to my shows, though, Aunt Louise. Why you showing up for Kia? It ain't never show up for me. I'm just saying. I'm, okay. Anyway, hello everyone, how are you? So it's 38 people in this room, nice, nice. Um, anyway, I'm Sheila Gaskins and I had the pleasure of giving birth to Nakia. And I can honestly say it was an easy thing to do. Um, I'm giving you talk show because you can't do a talk show without the cup. See Kia, look. <laughs> We're in our houses, but you would think I was at, what, Conan O'Brien's show. Look at this. <laughs> so I'm just so glad to be here. I'm so proud of Nakia. I'm so um, excited about her trajectory in comedy. And she is right. We are a house full of funny folk. Um, and it started with my daddy, who is the life of the party extremely funny and he plays too much and so um having a father that play too much you can only play too much and then i can't forget my mama she is an artist a poet uh very thoughtful and quiet and the combination of these equal us so <laughs> So she's right. Our household was always full of life and laughter and love. Let me take that off. And um, so um, growing up, my, my, uh, my father and we had a very funny household. Um, and uh, he uh he would tickle me y'all now i don't know if <laughs> what is that that's feedback coming from somewhere anyway my my dad would tickle me um all the way up until i was 18 years old and i don't know about y'all but to have a daddy who can tickle you but just to have a daddy is is vital it's important. And to have a daddy that was uh, there for you um, all the time was just, just so overwhelming. And I'm so glad that I know what that's like. That's such a comfort there. Um, so anyway, so he would tickle us. And I mean, literally, tickle, tickle, tickle. And all the way up until I was a senior in high school. And I can remember this story like it was yesterday. And he started tickling to me and I was like, daddy, stop, because I am an adult now. And his face was so sad. And now that I think about it, I was like, just to have him back, because he's no longer here, just to have him back, I mean, he could tickle me until I'm old as I don't know what, but just, anyway, I wanted to share that stuff. So Kia was asked, talking about the first time that I was an artist, um, or I felt like an artist. Uh, I was six years old and I come from a wonderful elementary school, Windsor Hills Elementary School 
in Northwest Baltimore. And in this school, the arts was just as important as math, reading, and language. And because it was such an uh, important place, we always did artistic things. And all of my teachers were old Black women in their 40s and 50s. So I would sit in their class and learn at their feet because they were the kind that was, come here, baby, sweetie, and, you know, give you a kiss and everything. Um, and so they were really old, though. As a matter of fact, when I think about it, when we was in the fourth grade, one of them was old and they died. And we thought we did that. We was like, oh, man, we are so bad. We are so bad. But she just was just old. So we didn't do that. And then my kindergarten teacher, her name was Miss Young. And she was so old. And I always thought, how in the world can that happen? How can she be Miss Young and she's so old? So as I, as I grew up, I understood the arts. And um, they let me do uh, murals around the school. They let me do plays. And I remember being um, in the kindergarten and we did the frog in the court and the frog in the court and then he did right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you know that song. Frog in the court and then he did right. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all know that song. Frog in the court and then he did right. Y'all know that song for real? Frog in the court and then anyway, said Miss Mouse, will you marry me? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, not ringing the bell. At any rate, so I was a P in that in that play and I was the proudest P ever. And when the reaction that I got, I was like, oh, oh, I, I love this. And then the one time when I knew I was an artist, I was in the play, sitting in the front row on the stage. I can remember like it was yesterday. I was in the first grade and I had on a dress and I had to say my line. And my mother and Miss Wimbish, my father, Mr. Wimbish, all the families was in the auditorium. And they said, uh, Sheila, close your legs. And I'm like, what? Because I'm on the stage. She's like, Sheila, close your legs. And I'm like, huh? What are you talking about? Sheila, close your legs. Oh, close my legs. And everybody started cracking up. They were just laughing. Unlike the reception I'm getting in here today. Wave your hand, y'all, because I ain't feeling nothing. So I know that, that y'all at least hearing me. Nikki Bird, she ain't even watching. Melanie Lee ain't looking at nothing. Okay, Corinne? Oh, that's a nice hotel where you at. Awesome. All right, cool. Okay, good. I got so, to have some love, y'all. So, Ma, yeah. as an artist and as a comedian, how do you spend your time in quarantine and what do you think has helped you navigate it the best? Um, so my days in quarantine start at, I wake up at 12 noon, which is the bomb. Then I go to bed about 12 midnight. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing that's very helpful is that I planned, I planned to sometimes not do anything because they say when you are in this state that this is like a big win, a big trauma win. And so you don't wanna get caught up in it. And so the key for surviving this thing is a strong foundation. Um, because in elementary school, they used to say all the time, empty cartons make the most noise. And I never understood that. Empty cartons make the most noise, they would say to me. And so the wind would blow and the cartons would go down the street and, I, and you would listen to a carton. And I was like, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna make that kind of noise. So I thought about my strong foundation. My, my mothers, my grandmothers, my aunts. Um, so Kia didn't tell you that, but we have a horrendously large family. My daddy is one of eight. And my mother is one of 15. And Aunt Louise, the number go up every time. So it'd be 20, 25. So we're looking at 23 aunts and uncles in our life. So that's 60, 43, 46 eyes that are on you. And so as, as being, being a 
a product of that family, you always had somebody checking for you, always looking for you. And it was always so crowded, like <laughs> every way, like you ain't need friends. Um, and we would go to New Jersey every weekend and we would go to my grandmother's house every Sunday. And so that strong family foundation is making me able to sit still while this tsunami of, of, uh, of, of, of happening is, is going on. And, and I come from a praying family. So we prayed all the time. And so to have a family on this side to pray and then have a family on this side to pray, you can't help but pray. And so that definitely kept me going. But, but one of the things that I'm learning here, because I'm in a class now, an online class, one of the things that I'm learning is that, um, that they say don't, talk about being resilient. You know how every time there's some trauma, people say, but you're resilient, right? They say, don't say that because when you do that, you kind of override what's happening with you. It's like an excuse for you to not feel what you're feeling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can put resiliency on the side and, and really deal with what you're dealing with. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think Oh, let me wait because it's it's an ambulance going by. It's Baltimore City that happened. Baltimore City. Um, we used to it. <laughs> um, but no, I think that that's important. Hold on. Dad, Kia, what's up with your neighborhood? And you just happen like every three minutes. And I'm in Fells Point. Hey, you guys, we got the chat room going on, so feel free to put stuff in it little notes things that you like or don't like um okay so okay they're gone now Go i ahead. actually stopped right in front of my house i was like oh no Ooh. not again they got flashbacks um but i i agree with that i think that is very important when you are feeling down to actually sit in those feelings and not ignore them and push them away um, it's really easy when things are getting tough to kind of be like, well, whatever, like, it's fine. Like, and when you do that, like you said, like, you're kind of not dealing with it. And one of the best parts to me about when bad things happen is that you know that good things are around the corner. Because like I said earlier, everything is temporary. Nothing lasts forever. So that's like the good things and the bad things. When the bad things are going on, you can have peace of mind knowing that this is just a phase. This is just a season. I will grow out of it. This situation in time will not, you know, harm me as much. But also when things are good, it kind of helps you to be present in that moment and really enjoy it while it's happening because it's not going to last forever. That's true. Um, so I have another question for you. Okay. What about dating? You look beautiful, by the way. Thanks. Yeah, girl. I see you. I see you. What about days when you don't feel as productive? Do you like beat yourself down about that? Or do you just allow yourself to rest? And because I know a lot of people um, being at home in quarantine, they don't, they feel like they have to be doing things. Like there's people saying that you need to be starting your business now. You need to be doing this and that. Um, but what about people who just want to take this time to relax? Like, how do you, how do you deal with those feelings of feeling like you need to be productive, but just not having the energy sometimes? I'm doing my frozen. I'm acting like you're stuck. <laughs> I'm doing you not stuck. <laughs> hey, y'all, I'm doing the frozen. Like the free, the screen frozen. <laughs> oh, boy, I'm having a good time. Kid, you having a good time. <laughs> All right, so what was the question, sweetie? What? <laughs> See, this is this is what my life was growing up, y'all. Is keep going. What's the question? Seriously, I'm well, ready. Now that we don't live together, it's different. Because look, I can just I can just mute her. I, I wasn't going to do that. As <laughs> See, that's the thing. No, that's why I like because, this. Look, no, don't mute because I can see you. I can see you. you got props, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that um, if you have days where you don't feel as productive, how do you deal with that? Because I know some people, like, they feel bad about not producing 
do you do that or do you have like another way to deal with those days when you just don't feel like creating so so this time right now has always been my dream <laughs> like when i was a little girl i wanted to just marry someone and not have to work i really prided myself when i watched people come to our school to volunteer um because you know lucille clifton and her children was in our school and so there was poetry all the time but i was like what she working from her house that's something you can do and then shelly's mom also did that um and so i was like if i get older i don't want to have to work so to have this time right now where i can get out of bed and make my breakfast and um uh, do something creative or watch the news or TV. I'm grateful for that because I've been working since I was 14. And I mean, I always kept a job. And when this is over, I might, I'm still able to go back to my regular job. So I can't wait to retire. Like I, I, I'm loving this. So one thing that I knew, knew a long time ago, when you are living by yourself, every miss every decision you make is the correct one because you don't have nobody else to judge it against so if i decide to lounge around that's going to be okay if i decide to do something that's going to be okay and i'm i'm comfortable with that because i don't want to get guilted into stuff mm -hmm. yeah that, that guilty stuff boy you be like why you ain't do that why you ain't do why you ain't exercise why you ain't because yep yeah, that's how I feel too. Uh, I've been working since I was 16, like during the summers. Oh, Shelby in the house. You see that? <laughs> What's up? I can't believe they came to see Kia and I'll be like asking them to do stuff and they'll be coming. Oh, uh, Shirley. Oh, uh, Shirley in the house. Uh. Well, anyway, like I was saying. <laughs> Go ahead, Keith. <laughs> um, I feel that same way. I've been working since I was 16. I'm 26 now. And during that 10 year span, I've had over 30 different jobs from like internship to like summer things. Wow. Cause you know, I'll leave a job if I don't like it in a second. Most of the time I'm not staying at a job more than a year. Um, but when I find myself feeling in the house, like, oh man, I really need to be productive right now, but I don't feel like it. I not only think about how hard I've worked, but also how hard my parents and my grandparents and all of my ancestors have worked as well uh, to be able to have this time where I can just lay in bed all day, like <laughs> all day long and yeah. only have to get up maybe if i need to use the bathroom and that's maybe i might just go right there oh like it's your choice no, no. You, no, you <laughs> you tell, i didn't teach you that now i didn't teach you that <laughs> even though i did decide to bathe today just for you i know and that's the best thing about these zoom shows nobody knows how you smell so <laughs> We can get tight up, though. I look good, but I don't even have pants on right now. I know. I feel the same way, girl. High five. No bra either, girl. I'm free. <laughs> um, also, in the chat, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them, and we'll uh, be able to answer them. Aunt uh, Shirley wanted a little routine, kid. She wanted a little routine from me. Can I give a little something? Can yeah, I go ahead. Because I've, uh, I've been working on some stuff, so... So, you know, this whole quarantine situation um, is really nerve wracking and people are home doing all kinds of things. Um, and I'm just so glad that my children are uh, in their own apartment and they're safe and they're together. Because my, my oldest, she went to Brazil, to Colombia. She lived everywhere. She speaks at least three languages. But when she was in the house with me, she couldn't change the toilet paper roll. What's that about? And she still don't. <laughs> and she still don't. So she could not walk 15 minutes to the cupboard to change the toilet paper roll? Oh, no, my friend. So I was on the bus the other day. Well, I was driving to the doctor's office. And on the bus, it said, for essential only, to get on the bus. How they know who essential or not? 
How they know you ain't just going to ride the bus to 7-Eleven for munchies? What, they going to follow you and get you off the bus? And then this is the thing, y'all. You got to enter the bus on the back seat. All that work, Rosa Parks did. <laughs> and we still got to go to the back of the bus. Thank you and good night. Was that okay, Aunt Shirley? Was that okay? Did you laugh? Did you laugh, girl? I see you. I see you. Hey, how about you, Aunt Louise? You smiling? All right, now. That's what I'm talking about. All right. I don't know if you all have um, gallery view, but my Aunt Louise, her name is Louise Fleming. She is, how old are you, Aunt Louise? Like 93, 94? <laughs> But look how amazing she looks. And she's working Zoom. Like, this yes. is amazing. <laughs> I don't know if she works a Zoom. It could be somebody else up in there. <laughs> it can't be. But still, she, she at least uh, she's seen. Look, our uh, Shirley working Zoom, too. We know how old she is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kim, what else? Because this is a show. <laughs> it's quarter up. Okay. Um, okay. So, why do you feel, and this is a question that we both can answer, but why do you feel like um, expressing yourself is important, not just during a quarantine era, but just in general? How do you think that that has um, evolved your life? Like, what has that done for you, being able to express yourself artistically? I think. Um... Again, I, I go back to my mama and my papa. You know, they, they, <laughs> they both had uh, parents who were very strict and religious, and they didn't do a lot, especially in the house. They, were, they had certain rules. Um, and um, so when they had us, they let us do <laughs> anything. And, and we did things safely, so it's not like, we could just, you know, do anything. I know when I was going to college, I didn't even tell them what I majored in because they was just glad I was going to college. So um, there was a lot of lead way. They were very lenient. And we could, we could, the barriers, there, there wasn't a lot of barriers to stopping us from doing stuff. And so we, I'm, I'm a product of the 70s when people was loving each other. We had the Afro, we had the pride. And I always knew who I was. I always knew who my people were or are. And I always knew that this whole racism thing was a lie and that we can do anything we want. Um, and with that, the people in my village, they, they didn't let me go astray. Like if I wanted to be bad, teachers and, and people in the community was like, nope, you ain't going to go be bad. You know, they would call up my mother. Do you know your daughter is somewhere? And so I was, I was being, um, what do you call it? I was being raised by this whole community um, that wouldn't let me go astray. What's the question again? Because I'm hyper. <laughs> I said, why is it important to express oh, yourself? Okay, and so that? knowing that, um, I, was, uh, I, I was able to be expressive. Like, I was this height in the second grade. So I, I, I said to myself, well, if y'all gonna look at me, I'm gonna give you something to look at. But the thing was in school, I got A's and B's. So I did my homework, but I got threes in conduct. But they couldn't say nothing because Sherry and Brett and Tony went to the same school and they also had A's and B's and threes in conduct. So it was a whole family who, who was loud and boisterous and expressive. And like you said, we didn't know that that was anything different. Like we didn't know, you know, that's how we got put out the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. we, got, we got put out the restaurant for being too loud. And so my thing is why you ain't loud enough. Don't be putting us out. So, so yeah, it's important to express yourself. You have, you have emotions. You go through things, you have to let it out, hopefully constructively, mm -hmm. because that's how drugs happen when people don't do things um, druggy, drug-wise. How long is this? Because it's 10 of, I don't know if you wanted people to talk 
uh, have chime in. Yeah, so um, I'm going to wrap it up, and then uh, David's going to come back on and say a few things about the pill. Again, if you guys have any questions, let me know. We can't um, take no questions from them? Yeah, we can. So yeah. If you want to maybe put an emoji in the chat or drop your question in the chat so I can know who has question. Oh, um, so, but we can't hear from them now. Like if Harriet wanted to say something. Yeah, if they want to, we can unmute that specific person. So I want them to say who it is so then we can unmute them. Oh, okay. Can you see? Can you see? Yeah, I can see the chat. Oh, okay. First, I want to thank you, Nakia, for inviting me. This was really special. I'm so proud of you. I look forward to future endeavors. And I just like hanging around. And I love you, Ania. And, <laughs> and, and I'm getting teary out now. But when, um, when, when y'all was born, I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you, you guys liked me. Because I knew I was going to like and love y'all. I just wanted to make sure that you liked me. And so far, you guys act like you like me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show y'all. Y'all see how she just made that her moment. She's been doing this my whole life. Like you want, you need to ask her for this, y'all. I'm serious though. though. I'm serious though. You say this every day, y'all. <laughs> no, because you always try to. <laughs> Come on, we got some questions, comments. Come on, y'all. But Come on, say some things. But thank you, though, for uh, being a part of this. And thank you for always instilling in us as kids that it was okay to feel the way that we do. Um, my mom was a very honest parent, um, very transparent. And I remember as a kid, I, she, I forgot what happened. Maybe she did something to me. I don't know. But she was trying to apologize to me as a kid. And I said to her, I was like, no, mommy, adults don't have to apologize to kids because that's what I heard some of my friends' parents say to them. So I just thought that like, oh no, like we're kids, it don't matter. You don't have to apologize to us, like whatever. And then my mom sat me down and looked me in the eye and was like, no, yes I do. I do have to apologize to you. And I've never felt, I never felt that way again. And just her doing that just kind of, to me, validated my feelings. It validated me as a person and it made me feel seen and it made me feel important. Um, and I think that's very important, especially if you have young kids, because a lot of times things will get really stressful for them and, and adults sometimes forget that they were kids before and like, will be like, Why, what are you stressed about? You don't have to pay bills, but middle school, elementary school and high school was stressful. You have to worry about a social life. You have to worry about grades. You have to worry about teachers who may not be good and all types of things. So you were always able to uh, validate how we felt about things and, and showed us that it's okay to be human and it's okay to express ourselves. Um, I used to write a lot as a kid when my mom would piss me off. This was before people could like tweet and stuff about it. And one time she actually read one of my, my notes that I was like talking all this mess about her because she ain't let me do something. And that day really uh, hurt my feelings. So I learned to hide my notes better so that she won't see them in the future. So. <laughs> and I know how to get to them anyway. <laughs> but before we go, um, I just want to say these are a couple things that I do um, to help me get through quarantine times. Like I said in the beginning, if you, as soon as you wake up, think of three things that you're grateful for. Even if it's just, you know, I'm grateful that I had food to eat last night. I'm grateful that I have this bed to sleep in. Just start your day off with gratitude. Um, because it'll really change it'll really change your day and it just gives you a brighter perspective and also do something that you like to do every single day even if you just take 15 minutes i love dancing so i will twerk around my house in the mirror for 30 minutes to an hour and i'll do that every day because it makes wow me so Thank you. and it's also a workout but like do something like that whatever it is if it's like I don't know. It don't even matter what it is, but just do something that you enjoy every single day. Um, yeah. Oh, before we go, I also just wanted to um, kind of dedicate this to lives that were lost by uh, police violence and just wanted to say Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery and the uh, countless others um, who are no longer with us, but we do 
you know, we see you and we acknowledge you and we're so sorry that it happened, but I think it's important for us to always keep that kind of stuff in mind. Um, yes. Just in general. Also want to dedicate this to my father who passed away a long time ago, but I love him so much and I always feel his presence around me and I know that I get a lot from him. Right. Um, so yeah, so. I, I can't take all of it, kid. He does have some. <laughs> he gave you some. Both of y'all. Are we taking questions from now? Yes. Nancy okay, unmute yourself. Let's hear it. What you got? Why are everybody just sitting around? I just said it. Can you hear me? Okay, okay. go for it. Saying that you guys, um, thank you for Nakia, especially sharing the story about um your apartment, um, and dealing with the roaches that came out with the sage, um, because it's just like we all kind of have moments like that where you think you would die if like other people knew what was going on at at that particular moment. Um, mm -hmm. but we all have been there, and so um, it is really important to tell these um sorts of stories. So yeah, just thank you for um holding space for people to connect and um, see some faces and see some people other than um, their four walls um, during this very weird time. Thank you, Corinne. Anybody else? Shout it out. What? Y'all ain't got nothing to Hold say. On. Can you hear me? Yes. For it. Can you hear me? Yes. Harriet. OK. Hey, Harriet. Okay, good, because I've been having some technical difficulties with Zoom, so I wanted to be sure you could see me. I wanted to thank you so much. I've enjoyed this so much, Sheila. You don't know. I can identify with what you're doing with the girls when they were little babies. I did the same thing with my children. There's something about us performers. We have, some, we have insight into what it's like to be a child. We never, we never forget. Right. Because it's essential to remember what it's like to be a child, to be an effective performer, and really to be a good artist. So we never lost touch with that. It, it plus... In different ways, I had the same struggles you did, and everything was a, was an adventure in my family. Everything was an adventure. So <laughs> get the light, get the, oh, we're going on the bus. Here's an adventure. We're doing a journey. Yep. <laughs> those, those are the days, Sheila. Those are I days. know that's right. I want to thank Harriet uh, Lane because when Kia, when I was pregnant with Kia, Harriet talked to Nia. She had a <laughs> her a one to one with Nia. <laughs> Um, and I, when I brought Kia home, I sat Kia on the table and Nia was like, when are you going to take the baby back? When are you going to take the baby back? <laughs> and so Harriet, uh, she really did that. So Harriet was like, listen, Nia, let me tell you about, and she gave her a whole spiel about sharing her life with Nakia. And it helped, right, Nia? It helped. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sure did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions, y'all? I this have a question. Is. Can you guys hear me? Yes, Aunt Louise. This is Rochelle. Oh, that's Rochelle. Okay. I thought you was Aunt do Louise. I sound yes. like, do I sound like uh, uh, I am? No, a we just can't see your picture. Because I don't have, I don't want my video. <laughs> okay. Go with your question. I remember I'm self quarantined, so I, I I don't necessarily have to do my hair. Okay. <laughs> oh, I feel you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my beautiful makeup on and everything. Yeah, I have a question. Um, and I hope it's a comfortable question for you two artists. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that being um sort of self quarantined or you know just things the way they are, I've actually enjoyed it. Um, for the most part. Um, I, I am fortunate to still have a job and work from home, so I'm getting paid. But with you two, um, does this give you some quiet time to do writing? Um, I'm Nakia with your stand up. Um, I did see your one stand up at, at, at the Greedy Reads place. Thought the whole thing was just absolutely awesome, very professional. And Sheila, you do the heart lifting of writing plays and directing and teaching and all of that. So the question is to both of you, do you find inspiration during this quiet time to write? Well, it's interesting because I usually get my inspiration from other people and like actually having experiences. So it's been kind of hard to even though I'm not doing anything, it's been hard to kind of just sit down and write stuff. Um, but because I have a backlog of ideas and notes that I've had for years, um, I have been kind of, when I do feel the urge to do it, I have been able to uh, write and like kind of use those ideas. 
but for the most part in quarantine, I've been like writing, like I, I'll write in my journal, but kind of just like day by day entries for my future self to read, just kind of explaining what this feels like. Um, to be able to like pass that information down to my kids eventually and my grandkids and stuff like that so that people know like how things were actually taking place during this time. Um, so yeah, it's like yes and no. Like it, I've been, I've found inspiration to, to write about like what's currently happening with myself. Um, but I usually get inspiration from experiences. So it's a, it's a weird like mix. The catch twenty two for you. For me, Shelly, I've been doing a whole art thing. So I'm I'm making crankies. And and for those who don't know what a cranky is, a cranky is like a panorama story that's told um through this cardboard box and it looks just like a, a television screen, but you you crank it. And so I'm starting to make a cranky and this is the first it's the goose story and this is the this is the the main character of the cranky. Um, and I've been trying to make a cranky for a long time. And I'm finally putting energy into that. And then I've been doing some film stuff around the house because the girls um, say I need to, if I want to do a whole film thing, that I have to do it myself. And so I've been, <laughs> I've been doing stuff myself uh, around the house. So I've been, in, I've been taking advantage of this. I'm loving it. Thank you. And if I get unemployment, how about I be making more in unemployment than I did when I worked? What? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yes, I'm looking at the chat. My um my best friend Ashley said that I got bars, which to the older people that means that I can rap. <clears throat> and I have been writing raps. I'm not gonna say any of them right now because they're not appropriate. But follow me on Instagram and you'll be able to see all my crazy raps. That oh, so now you're gonna be appropriate? Cause on the yes. weeds that I share yes. yes. Oh, oh all right, then. exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> on the weeds, that's all right. Once you do it, I'ma call you and you can hear it. I'ma record it. Can I? Hey, Aunt Doris. Yes. So Nikia, any other questions I, you guys? I enjoyed, I just wanted to thank Nakia for what she had to say about gratefulness. We really need to take the time to be grateful because we have so much to be grateful for. That's enjoyed true. it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you that's on Cheryl. That's one of my mother's other sisters, all 20,000 of them. <laughs> I don't think she had that many, Sheila. <laughs> it goes up all the time. <laughs> Every time I tell this story, it goes up. <laughs> you see how my mother be lying? She just be lying. <laughs> Any other questions, y'all? Yeah, I have a question. Let's get some plugs in, uh, uh, ladies. What's on the horizon once things open back up? Um, for you, Kia, do you have any um, shows coming up? Sheila, what about you? What's going on over there at Micah? Just give yourself some plugs. I do have um, a couple of online shows. I don't know about in-person things just because like, I know I wouldn't go to a comedy show in person right now because yeah, it's just, I don't really want to be around a bunch of people, but I do have a bunch of online shows coming up. So if you uh, follow my Facebook page or my Instagram and I will throw it in the chat um, so that y'all can, uh, you know, go and like the page. But that's where I post what's gonna be next for me. Awesome. And I am I have a show at eight o'clock. Uh it's called uh Flossie Open Mic Online. Uh my organization Art Part Tide. We we try to dismantle racism in the arts and we have a talent showcase um where we invite all walks of life. So it doesn't make a difference what you do, how you do it you are able to participate in this, uh, this talent showcase. And then all the donations are divided up between the people who are performing that day. Um, so we have visual artists, we have poets, dancers, you name it, it's a gamut of folk. And it's, uh, it's on Zoom um, and it's FOMO, um, F-O-M-O, and uh, it's totally free. So we have been doing shows every Saturday at eight o'clock and we have one tonight. The host will be Ricky Shackelford. And then next Saturday, Miss Maybell 
and then Coley Tangela will close it out on the 30th. But it's been really exciting. We've been having people in the room who traditionally wouldn't be in the room, um, and we've been grooving. So it's been definitely something to do while we are quarantined. Yes, and uh, it just was posted in the chat, the, the FOMO link. So if you want to oh, watch cool. it, it's right, yeah. it's, it's right in the chat. Um, <laughs> thank you again. Thanks for coming, Grace. I have some Seattle friends that came and watched Amy. Oh, Grace. hi, Seattle friends. Hi, hi Amy. Hi, Grace. Allison's here, are my best friends, Corinne and Narelle and Ashley and all the wonderful people that. But I didn't meet them, hunky, when I was out there. Ma, I'm talking. I, <laughs> cause cause I didn't I even hate. know you had friends. <laughs> what? You got friends? I, I like to thank Aunt, thank Aunt Louise and Aunt Darcy yeah. and Shelly and all the old heads, Harriet, who came in, who, who pushed the button and really made it in. So. <laughs> And from everyone at The Peel, we want to uh, thank Nikila and Sheila for uh, sharing with us today. We really appreciate it. If you are interested in other online offerings that are going on at The Peel, you can visit us online at www.thepeelcenter.org. And um, you can stay on top of what we have going on, both during this time of quarantine as well as beyond. And we also want to take a moment to thank all of you who tuned in today. We really appreciate your support, and it was a pleasure to spend part of this Saturday uh, afternoon with you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye, everybody. Be safe.